the elusive bridge. Canada has a lot of interesting places to see, and we travel a lot. Unfortunately, only a few of our adventures are later shared in the form of photo albums and home videos. But this quest for the Canadian railway history deserves a good telling. It has everything a good story should have. Planned as a short trip, it has turned into a long adventure with detective investigations, unexpected obstacles, deep historical explorations. It took a lot of effort and persistence to achieve our elusive goal. Like many good adventures, this story has started on Christmas. Normally Christmas is a quiet season for us. Time to relax, to rest from the busy summer schedule, to enjoy the peace and magic of the winter break. We don't miss the opportunity to do some late Christmas shopping, but honestly we simply enjoy the warm festive mood of the decorated malls. Leisurely walking along the aisles, gazing at the beautifully decorated Christmas trees, stepping into the shops that we normally skip in the everyday rush. Art galleries are especially attractive. We are not big fans of abstract art, but there are usually enough realistic paintings in the mall galleries to attract our attention. Canadian nature, vast landscapes, animals in the wild, Historical railway paintings are also very interesting. Thin sharp lines of rails running across the vast spaces of Canadian landscapes, linking the big country together. Its disappearing magic holds the history of Canada itself and of the brave pioneers that built this great country. Here is where it all started. In one of the pictures we saw a true winter heaven. Even to us the landscape looked so exceptional that we both sank into amazed silence. A thin metal arc of the bridge crossed the deep canyon and breathtaking height. The bridge was almost floating in the air. Thin, intricate structure would make Eiffel Tower die from envy. And nothing around, only huge mountains and forest-covered valley and snow, snow everywhere. We looked at each other, and the same thought reflected on our faces. Where? We should find this bridge. Never before had we seen a place where a man-built structure was inserted into the beautiful framing created by nature with such a seamless harmony. The temptation to see it with our own eyes was simply irresistible. If we could only know what a quest we are getting into. It is not easy to find a nameless bridge, even a beautiful one. There are plenty of them in Canada, and we did not know even the approximate area. Somewhere in the mountains, that was it. But then some luck has arrived in the form of the Andrew Railway Model Show. Wandering between the beautifully crafted layouts depicting various Canadian railway landscapes, we ran into a huge diorama of exactly the same bridge. The accuracy and level of details left no room for doubt. All we had to do was to ask the builders of the model about the original. Thus, the unknown bridge got a name, Stony Creek Bridge. No matter how generic, the name was more than enough for an internet search. Once back at home, we immediately powered a computer, and in five minutes a new geographical entity has entered our lives, Rogers Pass. Now it was time for paper maps, and maps has pleasantly surprised us. The pass was amazingly close, just 200 miles west of Calgary. By Canadian standards, this is almost in our backyard. A weekend trip instead of a lengthy vacation. Just let the snow melt.
first signs of summer and we are heading through the Rocky Mountains to the Rogers Pass. The mountains are so beautiful that we don't want to rush our trip. Hard to resist numerous temptations and we stop all the time for a spectacular waterfall or for a scenic climb. Here comes the train, down there slowly following the curves of the valley. It is very hard to build roads in this rough terrain, so old railroads and new highways often run side by side here. We can only guess how intimidating these mountains looked to the pioneers, who did not have any initial road to follow. This is yet another remarkable piece of Canadian railroad. A spiral tunnel runs inside the mountain. The tail of the train is still disappearing in the top portal of the tunnel, while the head has already emerged out of the bottom portal. The only purpose of the tunnel is to reduce the slope of the grade. There are two such tunnels in this area. Before they were built, this section of the track was the most steep and dangerous railway in the world. Finally, we reach our destination. Rogers Pass welcomes us with the historical railway museum and with the memorial to the railway workers who had perished in avalanches over the years. We soon discover numerous artifacts from the old railway time. Most of them are well preserved by the national park keepers. For example, this stretch of the old grade and a small stone bridge are in very good shape even though no trains are running on them for a long time. But not all historical places were so lucky. This is all that remains of the Glacier House Resort, a fashionable waypoint hotel near the summit of the Rogers Pass. Chased by the deadly avalanches, the railroad went underground and the famous hotel became obsolete overnight. All we can see today is a hundred years of desolation. Magnificent bridges fell to similar fate. All metal parts were removed from the abandoned structures and now only colossal stone pillars silently stand in the regrown forest. In many places we could see the remnants of the avalanche sheds, a sobering reminder of why the rails has disappeared from the Rogers Pass. We slowly toured all these bits and pieces of the former glory and tried to figure out where the railroad runs now. Where are all these famous tunnels, portals, or just any signs of the modern railway? We came here for the beautiful bridge, 
and the bridge cannot be inside the tunnel. Of course, if it still stands today and not gone for scrap metal 100 years ago. I bet the Mahmuds knew all the answers, but they didn't want to help us. To our big surprise, we could not find two identical maps of the pass. Hard to believe it can happen in our modern times, but all maps that we had were showing the railroad in different places, and none seemed to correspond to the actual terrain. But then we luckily stumbled upon the tunnel portal. This turned out to be the oldest tunnel in this area, built early in 20th century. The tunnel helped us to relate maps to the terrain, so now we knew where to look for our lost bridge. And here it is, up there, high on the mountain, almost invisible behind the trees. We are not sure what to do next. From the highway we can barely see just one side of the bridge. This is way too little, we need to get closer, but how? The map promised a road running almost all the way up to the bridge, along the creek. The reality, however, was very different. Can an old abandoned grade make walking easier? Maybe it is in good shape here, like in the other areas of the park. Let's try. We drove a little back, trying to find the place where the old grade runs closer to the highway. There we found another remarkable bridge, an old stone arc. This bridge turned out to be more accessible. Following a tiny but very distinct path, we got right to the stone bridge. Up close it was even more interesting than from a distance. The date of the building is still very visible, but for some reason it's turned to the valley. Maybe for curious birds? The abandoned grate leaves the bridge and climbs further up the mountain. It is a bit overgrown, but its general shape is reasonable. We checked the map once more and started to walk. But not for long. Well, the old 
stockade var too populated for our comfort and not by marmots. Turning back somehow seemed wise decision. Our second trip to Rogers Pass happened only next winter. At least this time of year is guaranteed to be bear free, and the beauty of the forest under snow is just breathtaking. We've never seen so much snow in our whole lives. Well, this was exactly what stopped us from reaching the bridge for a second time. Even on snowshoes, we could only walk in a few especially cleaned areas and passes. Even the small stone bridge that we visited in summer now was absolutely out of reach. In such amounts, snow can be deadly. Of course, we knew that Rogers Pass is famous for its winter avalanches, that numerous lives were lost in these mountains. But now we were almost physically feeling the enormous weight of the huge white blankets hanging on the slopes. Dark history frozen in the old black and white photos had suddenly materialized into something much closer than just history. Now we knew why Rogers Pass meets visitors with the memorial. We understood why the railroad itself has retreated into the tunnels. So we had to make a tough choice. After the avalanche dangers, bears seemed to be the lesser evil. Next summer we were back in the Rogers Pass again, but this third time with a firm intention to get to the bridge. And this time no cheating, just a straight direct climb. The forest on the slope under the bridge is dense but still can be negotiated. And the bears, well, just make a lot of noise and be careful. Bears, go away, we are coming. It works, they are going away. Finally, here it is, very close. We climbed to the edge of the ravine, the forest stepped aside, opening this magnificent view. It is surely worth the effort. A tourist train slowly crawls across the bridge. It slows down so that the passengers can get better view of the valley below. But they are looking from their own spot. The most beautiful thing here is the bridge itself, but it can be seen only from a distance. Encouraged by this first victory, we continue to climb and soon reach the rails. Now the bridge is really close, just around this corner. We silently stand in front of the bridge. Up close, it suddenly looks less impressive than from the distance. But who cares, we made it. Of course, the excitement is too high at this moment to be absorbed fully. Plus, the adventure is not over yet. We have to cross the bridge. The classic photo point from which most of the bridge photos are made is on the other side. The view of the valley below is simply amazing. But the height feels strange here. We are supposed to be used to it, but it still takes the breath away. The reason can lie in the strong infrasound. The waterfall resonates in the narrow ravine like in a huge organ pipe. Finally, we are on the classic photo site. It clearly was not used for a long time. The trees have grown significantly and now obscure some of the magnificent panorama. But what remains is more than enough for us. The 
what a landscape, what a structure, what a beauty. What mock up, what photo could capture this surreal, intimate feeling? It took us two years to get there. Effort well spent. Now we can simply relax and watch. Watch and relax. We did not know that Rogers Pass prepared a bonus gift for us. On our way down to the highway, we slightly deviated from the original path, and right in the middle of the forest suddenly stumbled upon another bridge. Very long, nicely curved, it ran along the hillside. Interestingly, it was also missing on all the maps that we had. After wandering through the dense, wet bush, we spot some fresh dirt on the camera lens. But who cares now? The adventure is over and it is time to get back home. There we'll have time to relax and to clean all our cameras. They'll have to be in good shape for our next trip.